morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, we have the latest on a shooting on the city's south side that ended with two people dead. Plus, as the coronavirus pandemic finally starts to see its end, there's word that many big companies getting ready to raise prices on items that you shop for every day. Outside with live cam, no. Your eyes and your, and your, I guess your feeling doesn't deceive you because it is colder? Yeah, it's it, it's April. It's hard to believe. Yeah, it's April 21st. 21st. <laughs> Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 21st. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so you, you have your extra jacket today, well, at least for the morning. No, I just ran to the car real quick. I, I did, I did, I, I, I'm not going to get the jacket out of the closet for one day. It's a uh, dead sprint. Sure. I'm just not yeah. going to do it. Very fast. Refuse. Uh, yeah, yeah it's a coat weather, I think, this morning, at least for a little while. We've got wind chills, guys, in the 40s this yeah. morning in a lot of spots. So that front meant business when it moved through yesterday evening. Right now, temperatures 50 at the airport, 49 Hello, Otis, 45 Bernie Sage. I do think we'll probably fall into the 40s here around San Antonio, but that wind makes it feel all that much cooler. This is we zoom out some. There are low 40s there in the hill country. It's possible we could see some 30s too. This is well below average when we're talking about temperatures. Those wind gusts still there starting to die down some and we'll see the wind progressively get a little bit lighter as we get later into today. But there's enough wind there where wind chills are in the 30s in parts of the hill country and in the 40s in parts of Bear County. So yes, you'll want to dress warm this morning. It doesn't warm up just a whole lot today. We'll see partly cloudy skies. We'll get up close to 70 for a high a little bit later this afternoon. The other thing we're watching, chance for showers coming up tomorrow, chance for some storms on Friday. We're going to break it all down for you coming up here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. New this morning, a woman rescued overnight after she and her daughter were involved in a rollover crash on the city's west side. This happened in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard near Calabria Road. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning. Stephen, what caused that crash? Hey there, David. Well, investigators haven't been able to determine the exact cause of the crash, but they say that that woman had to be rescued as first responders cut off the roof of that SUV to get her out safely. Now, that crash happened as the woman was driving down along Wilson Boulevard with her daughter, who we're told is as young as 10. Now, it was during that time the SUV rolled over into a via bus stop and fence. Now, the young girl was able to get out of the SUV on her own and thankfully was able to escape with no injuries. San Antonio police San Antonio Fire Department and EMS were all on the scene. Now, thankfully, that woman was also taken to the hospital with minor injuries. We are told that it was the only vehicle involved in the crash last night. However, investigators are still trying to determine the exact cause. David, Stephanie, over to you. All right, thank you, Stephen. Two people are dead after two shootings at a home on the south side. It happened in the 400 block of Clutter Avenue around 6 last night. Police say the homeowner and a friend were in the shed together. Then the shooter drove up to the home, went to the shed and started firing, killing the homeowner. The friend was able to get away. When the officers arrived to the scene, officers who entered the property were met with gunfire coming from the person they say shot and killed the homeowner. Police say officers then fired back killing the shooter. Chief William McManus said the homeowner's wife was also able to fire shots at the gunman who killed her husband before police arrived. Police say the relationship between the gunman and homeowner is not clear at this time and they're still investigating a motive. McManus said the five officers have between one and 10 years of service with the San Antonio Police Department. Also new overnight, police in Ohio shot and killed a teenage girl during an attempted stabbing in Columbus. Police showed body cam footage of the officer shooting the girl as she appeared to attempt to stab two people with a knife. Police there say state law allows police to use deadly force to protect themselves or others, and investigators will determine whether the shooting was such an instance. Afterward, the girl was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. And here is where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. Nearly 400 new cases were reported. That includes some backlog data. Metro Health is also reporting one new death. In our hospitals, 237 COVID-19 patients are being treated. 82 are in the intensive care unit and 35 are on ventilators. And a reminder, University Health made several vaccine appointments available on their website, wecandoitsa.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at the three locations listed on your screen. The Alamo Dome also offering walk-in appointments between 2 and 5 in the afternoon every day this week through Saturday. 
Now to some unwelcome news for your wallet. More big companies are raising prices in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's affecting everyone from shoppers at the grocery store to customers at the car rental counter. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the details. This morning, some popular household items will soon cost you more due to pandemic-related supply issues. Procter & Gamble is expected to hike prices between 4 and 9 percent on baby products, adult diapers, and feminine care brands beginning in September. The company, which also owns Tide Detergent and Charmin Toilet Paper, says some of those products will also be getting more expensive. It follows a similar price hike last month by rival Kimberly Clark which makes Huggies diapers and Scott paper products. What's happening is you have pent up demand due to COVID and that's being combined with you don't have all workers back to work. So that's creating a classic supply demand imbalance. Americans hitting the road this summer will also be paying more when it comes to rental cars. That's because of a shortage of vehicles. Rental cars had a, had a terrible business situation during the pandemic. Um, so they sold off, um, as, as in some cases, as much as half of their fleet. And auto companies have been forced to scale back production due to a shortage of semiconductor chips. The problem now trickling down to the car rental counter. And in some markets like Hawaii and Florida, we're seeing up to 300% increases. So the cost of your car can be way more than your flight these days. Another industry under new pressure, video streaming services. After months of being stuck inside, Americans are watching less TV. Netflix stock fell sharply Tuesday after the company reported a slowdown in subscriber growth. Consumers are now dropping streaming services at a record rate. Back to those prices at the grocery store, Coca-Cola has announced it will also be raising prices. Another factor in this is rising transportation costs. Gas prices are approaching $3 a gallon nationwide. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. It is now 437 and 50 chilly degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why more than 200 National Guard troops are now being called to the southern border. And the San Antonio Spurs are back home tonight after a couple of big wins on the road. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are in the 50s. It's cold out there. Go ahead and dust off your jacket and wear it, at least for this morning. We'll be right back. Vaccine advisors to the CDC expected to recommend the Johnson & Johnson vaccine be administered again under restrictions. On Friday, it's expected that the advisory panel will have specific recommendations about which people may be best suited to take the single dose vaccine. Researchers think based on a risk benefit analysis, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine should be returned to use in the U.S. Distribution of the vaccine was put on pause after blood clots appeared in a handful of women and at least one man who received it. But experts point out there is a much greater risk of serious blood clots in contracting COVID-19 itself with often fatal complications among the medical experts who believe the vaccine will come back on the market with restrictions after Friday's meeting is Dr. Anthony Fauci. A federal judge says Michael Cohen has to remain under house arrest. That's after former President Trump's one-time fixer petitioned for an early release. But the judge says it's too soon for that and says Cohen needs to exhaust other possible remedies first. Cohen is serving time after pleading guilty to nine charges. He's at home instead of prison due to the pandemic, and he could start supervised release in November. More than 200 National Guard troops are being called to the southern border. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey declaring a state of emergency due to a surge of undocumented immigrants who are in federal custody. Ducey says his state needs to protection and he blasted the Biden administration for not taking appropriate action. The governor says Arizona is providing $25 million to help pay for the mission. He adds the troops will monitor surveillance systems and provide medical assistance for those at detention centers. Our San Antonio Spurs coming home with two big road wins under their belt. Saturday night's 111 to 85 victory over the Suns in Phoenix and then against the Pacers in Indiana. Tonight they take on the Miami Heat, but here <laughs> tip off is set for 7.30 p.m. at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Struggle at home. Maybe that momentum on the road will work. Carry over. Wow, we can only hope. Yes, Ooh. hope so. It is 442, 50 degrees. And still ahead, need a new printer? We're going to tell you why it might save you more to splurge a little up front.
And also coming up, a closer look at why many Americans are still very hesitant to take any of the COVID-19 vaccines that are available. And welcome back. It's 445. All adults in the U.S. are now eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but a large portion of the population have vaccine hesitancy. ABC's Whit Johnson has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, with thousands of appointments going unfilled in some areas of the country, growing concern over vaccine hesitancy. Some clinics in the Dallas area have no lines and no waits. We can do about 12,000 shots a day at Fair Park. Uh, in the last few days, we've done less than 4,000 a day. Meantime, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is still on hold in the U.S. as health experts investigate those rare blood clots in six women. European regulators say they found a possible link between the vaccine and blood clots, but say the benefits outweigh the risks, and yesterday made the recommendation that shots move forward. A CDC advisory panel will meet on Friday to discuss the future of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the U.S. We'll be live from a mass vaccination center coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look. I'm Whit Johnson, ABC News, New York. And if you spent a lot of time working from home during the pandemic, you may be thinking it's time for a new printer. But before you go for the budget model, remember that sometimes the less expensive printers cost more in the long run. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz explains. It's the big gripe when it comes to printers. They can drink the ink and drain your wallet. But that could change now that a different type of inkjet printer is becoming more popular, the refillable tank. Refillable tank printers came out about six or seven years ago. Since then, their prices have come down and their performance has improved. Instead of using pricey cartridges, tank printers have reservoirs where you refill the ink cutting ink costs. With tank printers, you pay more for the printer itself, but the ink is fairly inexpensive. Over time, you really do save money. How much money? Consumer Reports compared the long-term costs of a few all-in-one tank and cartridge printers. They based it on typical use, about 30 pages a month of mostly text and a few graphics and photos. Take this top-rated Brother, priced low at $130. But factor in replacement ink cartridges, the cost after three years is more than $400. And after five years, more than $600. Now compare that to this top-rated tank printer from Canon. It's $300 up front, but factor in ink, CR estimates after three years, the cost goes up only $18 and only $30 after five years, a $300 savings over cartridges. There's another type of printer that doesn't use ink at all, the laser printer. If you print a lot of text, it will deliver crisp printing and save you money over the long run. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good advice. I need a new printer. <laughs> now, now you do? Yes. All right. Well, there you go. Information for you on printers. Yeah. Speaking of information, how about information on cold weather? Yeah. Uh, is it's it cold? cold? Is it, do we consider this cold? Uh, well, that's, that's the great debate, right? I, I do. I do. <laughs> I mean, it's cold. Then it's cold. It's Y'all cold. do go with it. It's cold. <laughs> We're going with it. 48 degrees currently. Uh, the average is 59. That's our average low this time of year. The record is 41. I don't think we're going to get into record territory, but it does feel very crisp and cool outside. It's jacket weather. We've got a couple clouds there off in the distance. Technically, we're at 50, but you're going to see this number go down, I think, at the top of the hour into the upper 40s, as I just showed you, 48 degrees. North northeasterly winds at about 13 miles per hour. And that's creating some wind chill values. 43 Comfort, 42 Kerrville, 42 Las Maples. 47 up there at Canyon Lake, uh, 51 Uvalde, and temperatures do moderate as you go south. 60 in Catula. Looking at the wind gust, starting to come down some. It was it was gusty as the front came through yesterday evening, and the wind stayed up most of the night. We'll see these numbers come down some, although we'll still be in the 10 to 20 mile per hour range through the afternoon. And uh, looking at those wind chill values with those gusty winds, this is what it feels like. 37 in Kerrville, 43 in New Braunfels. Technically not a wind chill yet here in San Antonio, but that will change. It, it feels like it's in the 40s with those gusty northerly winds. 35 is what it feels like in Fredericksburg. Here's your forecast for today. We'll get into the 50s by 10 o'clock. Noontime 60, partly cloudy. 68 by 3 o'clock. I think we top out close to 70 with northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. All in all, a pretty nice day. Dew points are going to be low. We've got very dry air in place right now. Changes rapidly tonight. Dew points start to really jump up on Thursday, and by Friday, 
We're seeing dew points near 70. That's important because we've got a storm system headed our way and it's going to tap into some of that moisture. We may get some showers and storms. Here's how I think it plays out. As we go into uh, this afternoon, this is around 4 o'clock, just partly cloudy skies, no big deal today. As we get into tomorrow, 7 a.m., clouds have already increased. We're starting to see some drizzle, especially out west, maybe a light shower or two, and that works its way east through the day tomorrow. So there is a chance for some off and on light showers, some drizzly stuff. Nothing that's going to amount to a whole lot, but it's going to be maybe sort of a, a damp, cloudy day. As we go into Friday, we start off with light showers and drizzle still, but by the afternoon we start to see some peaks of sun. This is important because that's going to add to the instability. This computer model does show a couple storms trying to pop up. Uh, it's still a little too early to say where exactly we'll see some of those storms, but I think the best chance is going to be I-35 and off to the east. Uh, and if we do see any of those storms, the potential to be strong to severe. This is the severe weather outlook for Friday, and it includes much of East Texas, but also San Antonio. And on a scale of one to five, we're talking about a two here. Hail gusty winds would be the main threats. We'll watch that Friday afternoon. As it stands right now, about a 40% chance of some storms. So it's not a slam dunk that everybody's going to get storm activity. 30% chance of showers drizzle tomorrow. 40% chance on Friday. It will clear out for the weekend. We'll be close to 90 both Saturday and Sunday, so it'll be toasty. And then it looks like we may get another chance for some showers and storms as we get into Tuesday of next week. We're back to the springtime heat, but today, a little different. Cool this morning, for sure, if not cold. So we need a good soaking on Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday we've got a great weekend. So That would be nice. I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we get some good healthy rainfall on Friday, although I'm, I'm a little skeptical. Uh-oh, okay. Yeah. We'll be prepared either way. Yeah, you're skeptical, I start to worry. <laughs> 452 and, you said it was 48 degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that little ticker thing is. It should a update. Off. Yeah, right, so don't get excited. <laughs> and coming up next, a closer look at a film starring Anthony Hopkins that's one of the films nominated for Best Picture in this year's Academy Awards. And as we go to break, some lottery numbers for you. Pick three, one, four, six, fireball is two, and your daily four, two, zero, five, two, your fireball is eight. Cash five, two, seven, eight, 24, 29, and your Mega Millions, six, 23, 43, 49, 52, Mega Ball five, Mega Flyer three. Good luck. Welcome back to 455, a closer look at more films being nominated for Oscars, plus why a famous Hollywood producer is calling it quits, at least for now. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. We're just days away from the Oscar. What is this nonsense? And The Father is up for a bunch of Academy Awards, including the big one, Best Picture. Writer and director Florian Zeller tells me that his story of a father losing his mind to dementia, a story that came from personal family experience, is a story that he knows is sadly not unique. Everyone has a father, and everyone has or will have to deal with this kind of issue, not, on, not only dementia, but, you know, just dealing with all the reparents. The moment when you have to become the parent of your own parents. Zeller is up for Best Adapted Screenplay and stars Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Colman scored acting noms. The Oscars air Sunday night on ABC. Powerful Hollywood producer Scott Rudin is stepping back from the biz after stories about his alleged abusive behavior were featured a couple of weeks ago in The Hollywood Reporter. The social network and Truman Show producer says he's taking a break to work on personal issues he should have addressed a long time ago. Five years ago today, the shocking death of one of music's most celebrated artists, Prince, died unexpectedly of a fentanyl overdose at his Minneapolis area compound. In the years since his death, his music vault has been opened by his estate, and the unreleased album Welcome to America is due out in July. And happy birthday today to Gugu Mbatha Ra, the morning show actress, is 38, while sitcom star Tony Danza is 70. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. I saw the story about Prince the other day, and they were talking about how the number of songs that are in this vault, he can like do albums for every year for Years to infinity. Come. Wow. Just unbelievable yeah, he amount had of music a, left. A lot of work that yeah. he was still working on. Working on, yeah, yeah. unbelievable. 457, 50 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, President Biden is giving his comments about the verdict in the Derek Chauvin case. We're gonna have his reaction, plus what's next now that the trial has concluded?
Plus, are you a fan of photos? Polaroid has just revealed its smallest ever analog instant camera. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a mother driving an SUV with a child inside crashes to a VIA bus stop overnight. We've got an update on their conditions. Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer, guilty on all three charges. I'm Mike Ajachi reporting in Minneapolis. Coming up, the renewed calls for police reform on Capitol Hill. And taking a look outside with live cam, we are in the low 50s, high 40s. Either way, it's cold out there. Grab a jacket before you head out. And good morning. It is Wednesday, April 21st. When you walk outside, you may see stuff spread all over your yard. Yes, it, it got pretty windy yeah. last night. Did you did you witness the wind? Wind <laughs> the and chilly. Yes, it got pretty cold as or, well. Or as you and Justin like to say, cold. It was cold, right, Justin? <laughs> I mean, not I not not nine degrees cold, but cold. by our standards, it's cold. <laughs> Okay, 49 degrees right now. I'd say that's cold. There are wind chills out there. This is below average weather. So as you send the kiddos to the bus stop this morning, they'll want the coat, maybe one of those heavy coats, 47 to start. You may not need it though this afternoon. It does get up close to 70. It is April after all, but we'll still get some northerly winds there, 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll call it partly cloudy a little bit later today. Let's look at the numbers around the area. We're down to 48 in Holotus, 43 Bernie Stage, 43 Comfort. And again, 48 here in San Antonio, 47 right off, 47 in New Braunfels. And zooming out some, some 50s and 60s as you get further south. So the temperatures moderate some, but much of Texas sitting in this cooler weather. And with those winds still fairly strong, we've got wind chills now. 42, that's what it feels like here in town right now. Feels like 37 in Kerrville, 35 in Fredericksburg. No AC needed today. 53, 10 o'clock will be up around 60 noontime, 66 by 3 o'clock. And again, we should top out near 70. So the cool weather today, moisture returns tomorrow and maybe some thunderstorms Friday. We'll update that forecast in just a couple minutes, but let's get over to Samuel King. How are things looking this morning? Hey, good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone out there. Things looking pretty good uh, this morning as compared to yesterday where we had uh, some crashes uh, at this hour. This is a look at the map. Everything is good to go. So if you are a person who needs to head out early this morning, uh, this is a Good news, even from Seguin, New Braunfels, and into San Antonio. Uh, looking at Bandera Road, had some delays here a little bit earlier, but uh, things look good now, 10 minutes between 410 and 1604. Looking around the region, I mentioned New Braunfels, 26 minutes coming in on I-35 into downtown San Antonio, 29 minutes from Seguin, 24 minutes from Bernie this morning. Here's a look at Transguide, 410 at Jackson Keller. Traffic flowing well this morning, as it is at I-10 at Callahan. We'll have another update coming up. David, Stephanie. Thanks, Samuel. New this morning, a late night drive ends in a rescue for a woman on the city's west side. It happened in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard and Culebra Road just after 11 last night. Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning with how it all unfolded. Good morning, Stephen. Well, David, Stephanie, investigators say that the woman was driving down Wilson Boulevard with her daughter, who is as young as 10 years old. Now, they say it was during that time that the white SUV she was driving rolled over into a via bus stop and fence. Now, thankfully, the, her young daughter was able to escape the car with no injuries, and but her mother was trapped inside that SUV for a short while. San Antonio Police, San Antonio Fire Department and EMS were all on the scene and were told that they had to cut the roof of that SUV open to get the woman out safely. Now she was taken to University Hospital with thankfully only minor injuries. Now the cause of this crash has still not been determined, but investigators do say that there were no other vehicles involved in that late rollover crash. For now, reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David. St Thank you, Stephen. After 10 and a half hours of deliberation over two days, the diverse jury finding former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all charges. The verdict drawing various reactions outside the courtroom and across the country. ABC's Ike Ajachi has the latest from Minneapolis. Overnight, celebrations and even some fireworks in Minneapolis. After 10 and a half hours of deliberation, Members of the jury, I will now read the verdicts. As they Judge Peter Cahill the announcing the fate of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second-degree murder while committing a felony, 
find the defendant guilty. Chauvin, convicted of all three counts, second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. The jury of seven women and five men, which included six people of color, working swiftly without sending a single question during their ten and a half hours of deliberations. The former officer, silent and stoic as the verdict was read, eventually led away in handcuffs and taken back into custody. At George Floyd Square, near where he was murdered, the crowd erupting in cheers. And in Houston, Floyd's family members, including his older brother, watching as the verdict was read. Today, we are able to breathe again. Just because you are a law, you're not above the law. Convicted, guilty on all counts, George Floyd mattered. Headlines from some of the nation's top newspapers this morning. Even President Biden sharing a solemn moment with the family, saying the verdict is a step in the right direction, but more needs to be done. In order to deliver real change and reform, we can and we must do more to reduce the likelihood that tragedies like this will ever happen and occur again. Overnight, Democrats renewing their push for Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that would ban chokeholds and no-knock warrants, among other measures. Now, despite the renewed energy for legislation, the bill faces an uphill battle on Capitol Hill. It'll need the support of all Democrats plus 10 Republicans. Ike Ajaji, ABC News, Minneapolis. Back here at home, it could be several weeks before an official ruling is made on a civil lawsuit over the Sutherland Springs Church shooting. Both sides have now presented their closing arguments in the case. The 2017 shooting claimed the lives of 26 people. According to the lawsuit, several of the victim's family members argue the U.S. Air Force failed to place shooter Devin Kelly into the National Background Check database after a domestic violence conviction. The government argues even if he was in the database, Kelly still could have committed those shootings. San Antonio police and crime stoppers need your help finding a man they say robbed an area Walmart. This happened back on April 7th. Officers say the suspect entered the Walmart located in the 6700 block of Loop 1604 North and tried to take some items there. When confronted by loss prevention employees, police say the man threatened to stab the employee with a knife. Then the man got away and was not found. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward if the information you provide leads to an arrest. It is now 5.07 and it is below 50 degrees. We're hanging right around 49 right now. Ooh. Chilly outside. Yeah. And still ahead, air tags, iMacs, iPads, and more. We're going to tell you all about Apple's newest products the company just debuted. And also coming up, a terrifying moment caught on camera. We'll tell you about amazing rescue after a child fell into some railroad tracks. And taking a look outside with live cam. Yeah, it's a chilly 49 degrees. Go ahead and dust off your jacket. You will need it this morning, definitely. And uh, it's gonna, I don't wanna say warm up, but it's gonna be a nice cool day for the most part. We're gonna check in with Justin in just a bit. And welcome back, it's 511. A railway worker becomes famous after a heart-stopping moment of heroism is caught on camera. Seeing as Jeremy Roth has the details for us. Terrifying video surveillance from Mumbai shows the moment a child was pulled from the path of a speeding train. The child was with his mother, who is blind, when he slipped and fell onto the tracks. A railway worker can be seen sprinting into view and pulling the child to safety mere moments before the train zooms by. No one was injured in the incident. The railway worker is receiving loads of praise on social media, including from India's Minister of Railways, who called the rescue an exceptionally courageous act. Hey boy, what are you doing up in here? Watch rescuers free a terrified dog from the undercarriage of a truck. Look at that face. The German shepherd named Booger climbed underneath the vehicle during a storm. Booger's owner spotted his tail sticking out and realized he was trapped. The two-year-old pup was so frightened, he snapped at rescuers during the operation. Once they sedated and muzzled the dog, they were able to work to free him, but not before having to remove the truck's drive shaft and sway bar. Booger's owner says he's doing well and appreciates all involved in the rescue. Poor fella, he's down for the count. Sometimes the right rescue is simply about leading the way. Just take a gander at this wayward family of geese in Las Vegas being given a personal police escort to safety. Nevada Highway Patrol officers ushered them off a busy roadway with a verbal warning for obstructing traffic. Then the fine-feathered family was pointed in the direction of a nearby golf course. 
For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. He named the dog Booger. <laughs> Glad he's okay now. Oh, there's so much in so little time. Yeah. 513 and 49 degrees. Uh, get your wallet ready. We're going to show you the slew of new products that Apple just unveiled. Plus, Polaroid showing off its smallest ever analog Insta camera. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Welcome back. It is 16 minutes after 5 o'clock. Apple held its first product launch event of the year where it introduced a new iMac, an updated iPad Pro, and a lot more. ABC's Mona Kozar Abney has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a new generation of Apple products. The company unveiled a thinner iMac desktop that comes in seven colors. The latest iPad Pro with 5G is billed as the most powerful tablet on the market. And Apple rolled out AirTags to help you track lost items. Microsoft is making changes to give you a break during meetings. An update to Outlook will allow companies the option of scheduling breaks between work meetings. Microsoft made the change after doing its own research on digital overload. The company said in a blog post that even a sliver of time between meetings can help. Finally, Polaroid's smallest camera ever. The Polaroid Go is designed to be worn. It's four inches long and just over two inches tall. Pictures take about 15 minutes to develop. The Go costs $100 and will be available next Tuesday. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. That's cute. But the pictures are like really small. That's okay. That's, that's a picture on the go. It's like a little trading card. And it, what, how long did it take just to develop the picture? Whereas, remember uh, the old Polaroid? Yeah, you, you just go like this. Wave it in the air. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I do remember that. Those were fun, though. It was immediate gratification. At least you could, you know, like, well, I guess now you can see the picture on your phone. Yeah, so. You can actually have a picture and give it to somebody. Old, yeah. Old, yeah. All right, let's check in on traffic here, Sam. <laughs> well, the traffic picture is looking pretty quiet Ooh, uh, right nice. now. A lot of green on uh, the roadway, so that's good. So if you're a person who uh, heads out early or needs to head out, this would be a good time to do so as we head uh, over to uh, the wall here. You see plenty of green. Let's take a look at 35 inside of Loop 410, 9 to 10 minutes from the northeast side into downtown San Antonio and about the same thing from the southwest side between the southwest side and downtown 10 minutes each direction inbound and outbound. And here is Transguide 35 at 410 is looking fine 410 at Bandera traffic picking up a little bit, but things look well as as at 1604 and Bandera this morning. Pretty good start to the day traffic wise guys. Not too bad. Thank you so much, Samuel. I like that. Mm -hmm. Remember the like the bar of flashlights on top of the floor? What? Yeah, I, I remember I'm, I'm those. Trying to, I'm trying to I was like, like five, but yeah, I remember those. Oh my goodness! Oh, don't people on some of the great technology we had years and years ago. You don't remember flapping ago. your pictures around? I, I, yeah. <laughs> or your parents flapping, a little bit. flapping the pictures around. You know, I looked around the neighborhood last night when that front came through, and I was I was looking for any kids with a sturdy kite. You know, getting a kite in the air oh. didn't happen. Aww. It would have been good kite flying weather though. It would have been. The winds were gusty. Uh, we're going to see the wind stay a little bit breezy today. Uh, partly cloudy and cool. We're in the 40s right now, probably only warming to about 70 or so. Clouds return tomorrow. Showers we will get some drizzle on your Thursday and then Friday. We'll start off with some drizzle and then we may see a few storms late in the day. By the weekend, it's looking great. So some busy weather next few days. We're watching a little bit of cloud cover out west. If you're watching us from Del Rio or Eagle Pass, clouds have filled in there. 
Yeah, we're seeing a couple of clouds trying to work through the sky, but no big deal. Obviously, no rain uh, to deal with, and temperatures are sitting at 48 degrees. North northeasterly winds at about 14, but gusting to 26. Still breezy out there, and because of those gusty winds, there is a wind chill. 43 Bernie Stage, 45 Bandera, 52 Castroville, 51 at Stinson, uh, 15 Uvalde, 56 in Delray. A little warmer out there because of those clouds that we just showed you. And, and there's a look at the wind gusts, anywhere from 20 to 25, I'd say. Seen some gusts pop up there, 17 in Fredericksburg. I think we'll stay in the 10 to 20 mile per hour range, but generally speaking, winds are going to calm just a little bit as we get into this afternoon. But when you factor in that wind, 42 is what it feels like here in town. It feels like it's in the 30s across a large portion of the Hill Country. So it's a chilly morning by April standards, no doubt. Uh, the forecast for today, 53 by 10 o'clock, 60 by noontime. We'll be up around 66 by 3 o'clock and we'll top out right at about 70 degrees. Dew point tracker shows that dew points will be really low today. They do build, though, starting tonight. And through the day tomorrow, moisture increases. That brings in the cloud cover. That brings in that chance for a shower, maybe some drizzle. And we peak at a dew point near 70 on Friday. That sets the stage potentially for a couple strong storms. So here's how it plays out as the computer models see it. And this is 4 p.m. today, uh, partly to mostly sunny skies. Forecast for 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, we start to get some showers, especially out west. Del Rio, Eagle Pass, over towards Uvalde, you can see some light showers. That spreads east, San Antonio, into our eastern counties by tomorrow afternoon. Everything we see tomorrow is going to be light. It's not going to add up to a whole lot, but it could be a little bit damp at times. As we get into Friday morning, more showers, more drizzle, maybe even a little bit of fog to start your Friday. And then by the afternoon, we'll start to see a few breaks in the clouds. That's going to contribute to some instability. When you get the warmth, you get the moisture, and we get lift, which we're going to get coming out of the west, we could start to see a few storms. This computer model doesn't show a whole lot and shows most of it east of I-35. But if we do see some storms, there is a threat that they could be strong to severe. On a scale of 1 to 5, we're talking about a 2. Hail, gusty winds, your main threats. And that does include San Antonio, so we'll keep a close eye on it. Not everybody's going to get uh, thunderstorm activity. Not everybody's going to get rain or at least significant rain on Friday, but the chance is there. 30% chance showers drizzle Thursday, 40% chance drizzle fog early at 40% chance of storms in the afternoon. It does clear out by the weekend though. 87 Saturday, 88 Sunday, warm weekend and another chance for rain looks like middle part of next week, guys. Weekend looks nice. It does, uh, you know, back into the upper 80s, which is sort of what you would expect this time of year. They look a little more normal. A little more normal. Okay. Yeah. All right, Dustin, thanks. Yep. It's 523. It's 49 degrees right there at And up next in your morning spotlight, why the Hollywood Foreign Press has expelled its former president, plus the infamous Baby Shark song may be making a comeback. Oh, oh Justin, I bet you can't wait. <laughs> Lottery numbers as we go to break. Pick three, one, four, six. Fireball is two. Daily four, two, zero, five, two. Fireball is eight. Cash five, two, seven, eight, 24, 29. Andrew Mega Million, six, 23, 43, 49, 52. Mega Ball five, Mega Plier three. Good luck. And welcome back. It's 26 minutes after 5 o'clock. Things unsettled in Tinseltown from a shakeup at the group behind the Golden Globes to a certain song that many parents hoped they'd heard for the last time. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The Hollywood Foreign Press Association has expelled its former president over a controversial email. Philip Burke sent members an article describing Black Lives Matter as a racist hate movement. Burke, who's from South Africa, served eight terms as president of the HFPA, which produces the Golden Globe Awards. Yeah, definitely. Dakota Johnson is set to do Jane Austen. The actress has signed to star in a Netflix adaptation of Persuasion, based on the Austen novel about an unconforming woman whose family is on the verge of bankruptcy. Filming is expected to begin next month. More evidence the pandemic may be waning. Baby Shark Live is returning. The musical stage show based on the viral kitty song is returning to the road with two dozen dates announced for June alone and more shows to be announced soon at babysharklive.com. Well, parents, you wanted to get the kids out of the house. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
<laughs> you and Justin just started, like it was a natural thing to just start yeah. singing and doing it. We know it, yeah. <laughs> On cue. So I'm sure y'all are thrilled Baby Shark is back. Oh yeah, we can't wait. <laughs> it's time now, it's 528 and about 49 degrees right now. This is like, like automatic reaction. Still ahead on JMSA, we're going to bring you some new information from the American Academy of Pediatrics about why the number of kids with COVID-19 is going up again. Plus, the price of diapers and other similar products could soon be going up. We're going to tell you why. Plus, Piper Lear Beer brand is out with a new line of alcohol products, including some alcohol-filled popsicles. We'll tell you when you can get some coming up. And good morning. It is 531. Oh, watch it. Don't smack that alarm just because it's going <laughs> off and it's Wednesday and you're going, oh, no. I know. Oh, and another reason people oh, might want to stay in because it's a little chilly out it there. It is a little chilly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I have to turn on the AC today? I don't think. So that's nice. Can, oh, there you go. Some people may open up the windows. I, it is a positive. Uh, we're, we're seeing some pretty nice weather here for April. Yes, it is a little chilly this morning. 48 degrees right now. 38 San Angelo. 36 Abilene. Some places below freezing there in the Texas Panhandle. So this is a nice cool air mass that has settled in. It's pretty much just here for today, uh, but uh, we're going to see some pretty cool temperatures this morning. 43 Comfort, 44 Bandera, 46 right now Canyon Lake, uh, 51 Pleasanton, 59 Catula. That's where some of the warmer temperatures are. There are some clouds out west. That's going to keep temperatures up just a little bit. Enough wind there, though, to produce wind chill values in the low 40s here across the city of San Antonio. 36 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 34 in Fredericksburg. And the forecast for today, 60 noontime, 66 by 3 o'clock. We'll top back close to 70. So yeah, not a bad day by the afternoon. Winds will calm some too. Changes next few days. More clouds, chances for rain, maybe a few thunderstorms Friday. That forecast is coming up, but let's go over to Samuel King with a look at your traffic. Anything going on? Uh, we have a stalled vehicle, uh, Justin. This is uh, Loop 410 at uh, Cherry Ridge. Uh, they were just adjusting the camera there so we can get a better view of what's going on there. So we'll go over to uh, the wall here, give you this on a bigger screen. So uh, you can see this here appears to be uh, in the, the eastbound lanes there, and but not really affecting traffic too much. This is off to the side, and here's where that is on the map. Uh, you can see there, there is uh, Cherry Ridge. And this is uh, over toward Vance Jackson. Uh, so, but as you saw, it was on the side, so that's a good deal this morning. Uh, here's a look at some travel times across the region. Still look fairly good, all green, uh, which is what we like to see, including 25 minutes from New Braunfels, 19 minutes on 35, 19 minutes on US 90 from the Castroville area. And again, uh, 410 Cherry Ridge is something to uh, look out for uh, this morning. Hopefully, uh, this gets cleared up soon. We'll have another update coming up. Thank you, Samuel. A man who worked as a manager at a business in Castle Hills is accused of doing something that was not in his job description. Police there arrested him on charges of indecency with a child. Katrina Weber is live outside the Castle Hills Police Department. Now, Katrina, you say this has to do with the teenage girls who worked with him. Well, that's right. Police here say that they have heard from three girls so far, all making similar claims against their former manager. As a result, police arrested 27-year-old James Maxwell Crow yesterday. The claims against him date back as far as September of last year. The girls all are under the age of 17. The arrest affidavit says that they told police that Crow repeatedly groped them and made other sexual advances against them while they were at work. It doesn't mention the name of the business involved or what type of business it is, but it seems all three alleged victims say that Crow began touching them soon after they started working with him. And we hope to find out more about this case and also to find out whether police are perhaps looking for other victims involved. Reporting live in Castle Hills, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Today, President Joe Biden will talk about the latest information on the COVID-19 response just days after passing his goal of delivering 200 million COVID-19 vaccine doses in the first 100 days of his presidency. Every day, millions of people are rolling up their sleeves to get vaccinated. But as Britt Conway reports, a lot of people are also rolling back safety measures. And now more and more kids are testing positive for the virus. More people in the United States are being vaccinated every single day at an accelerated pace. That's the good news. The bad news. Cases and hospitalizations are increasing in some areas of the country. 
But you wouldn't know it based on a recent poll from Axios Ipsos that shows people are getting more lax about public health measures. 53% said they visited family and friends in the last week, 48% went out to eat, and 63% said they wore a mask the entire time they were away from home, the lowest since July. Health experts say they get it. Just like all of you, I want to get back to doing the things I love. But we're not there yet. More people need to be vaccinated. Not to mention... There are no licensed vaccines. There are no approved vaccines for, for children. And now the American Academy of Pediatrics says children are making up a growing share of new COVID-19 cases, accounting for nearly 21% from April 8th through 15th, with more than 88,000 cases. Companies have been testing the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines on children, with Pfizer looking to extend its emergency use authorization to those 12 to 15 years old. And there are trials underway for kids younger than that. Perfect. But until then... We need to wear masks. We need to wash our hands. We need to do these things to protect children. Look at you, brave kid. Oh I'm Britt Conway, brave. reporting. In the meantime, Abbott's rapid home test for COVID-19 will soon be available for purchase. They're called Binax Now Self-Tests and can be bought without a prescription. At first, the tests only will be sold at CVS, Walgreens, and Walmart. They should be available in the next few days online and in some stores. You can buy the Binax Now Self-Test in two-count packs for $24. Abbott says it's the most affordable and most studied COVID-19 rapid test in the U.S., the tests were given emergency use authorization by the Food and Drug Administration. It can be used on children as young as two years old and gives results in about 15 minutes. American Airlines says it's bringing back all pilots on the job by the end of the summer. The company will be hiring 300 new pilots by the end of the year and 600 pilots in 2022. That's something the company hasn't done since the pandemic brought air travel to a halt last year. American Airlines made the announcement in a company-wide memo saying it looks forward to a busy summer season. In the meantime, air travel levels remain at pandemic era highs. The Transportation Security Administration screened more than 1.4 million people at airports across the country on Monday. By comparison, only 99,000 people were screened on the same day back in 2020. Take you to the West Coast, a man rescued after driving his SUV over a cliff and into the ocean in Southern California. He drove through a guardrail, a fence, down onto South Carlsbad Beach. The SUV ended up on its side in the water. A fire official says a retired Marine pulled the driver out of the vehicle. Crews put him on a stretcher and took him up the cliff. He was taken to the hospital where he was awake and breathing. No word on what injuries he suffered, but officials said they expect him to survive. Whoa. I know, it's crazy. Time now, 538 and about 49 degrees. Still coming up on Good Morning San Antonio, how a local school district is making sure parents know the importance of getting kids enrolled in pre-kindergarten programs. Also up next, we're going to tell you more about Anheuser-Busch's new slew of alcohol products, including some spiked ice pops. Ooh. And outside with live cam, might not need a popsicle today. It's pretty chilly out there. Some call it cold. You'll need that coat when you head out this morning if you're going to catch the bus or go to work early. Justin Horn's got your forecast coming up. And welcome back. It's 541. In your morning consumer headlines, you might have to pay more for Pampers, Loves, Always, and Tampax products this fall. Procter & Gamble says it's raising prices on those items because raw materials are getting more expensive. The company says it will charge retailers like Walmart, Target, and Costco roughly 5 to 9% more. Stores can then decide whether to pass on the cost to the consumer. Kimberly Clark says it will increase some of its prices, too. Americans ditch and plan staycations this summer. Instead, more than two-thirds of Americans plan to travel for vacation over the summer, according to a new survey by TripAdvisor. Of those traveling, 74% will stay domestic, with 13% traveling internationally. The hottest amenities following the pandemic are clean hotels with free cancellations, as well as those with dine-in options. Beach getaways, top most Americans travel wish list with Florida and Mexico being the most popular destinations. Natural light, it's not just for college students on a limited budget. At least that's what Anheuser-Busch hopes. The brewer is branching out with a variety of new products. In addition to spiked seltzers and flavored vodkas, the 44-year-old brand just unveiled 
alcohol-filled popsicles. Yes, you can see they're popsicles. They're called Natterdays Frozen Icicles, and they're 8% alcohol by volume. Right now, two flavors are available in 12 packs, strawberry lemonade and pineapple lemonade. The company says it hopes these frozen treats will be attractive to beer-reluctant drinkers. Interesting. I guess you're going to have to keep them in a separate section of the freezer for oh my regular goodness. popsicles. <laughs> yes, that would be terrible. Kids get the ones on the right, <laughs> not the yeah. ones on the left. No, lock and key. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> Time now is 543 and 49 degrees. Ooh, enrollment for pre-K classes has gone down since the pandemic started. Up next, how an area school district is making sure parents are getting their kids prepared for kindergarten. And welcome back to quarter to six. The benefits of a pre-K education have been studied and found invaluable for things like numbers and letters and social and emotional skills. But pre-K enrollment across our area dropped this school year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how Somerset ISD is focusing on enrolling pre-K students and their message to the parents. This week we do have our pre-K roundup. Our we have staff available that are enrolling children. There's a big push this week at Somerset ISD to register students for pre-K. They can pick up the packet and they can drop it off. They can sit in their car, fill out the application. Helen Ramos, principal at Barrera Veterans Elementary School, says they have created flyers and posted on social media about enrollment starting. We noticed it here in our own district in Somerset that the numbers were declining or when we enrolled kids in the fall and it was significant for us. Ramos says some families did not enroll their children for pre-K this current school year because of safety concerns. At Barrera Veterans Elementary, last school year they had 89 students enrolled in pre-K. This year they only had 49. Other districts in our area also saw a decline. And Northeast ISD last year, they had 1,926 students enrolled. This year, they had 1,181. Ramos wants parents to know that it's safe to bring their children back to school. We have little bulldog calls throughout the hallway so that children learn how to space themselves when they're walking in line. Um, we are constantly hand washing. We use sanitizers. Ramos is feeling optimistic. She says now with more people getting the COVID-19 vaccine, she believes enrollment numbers will be better next school year. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Speaking of going to school, the bus is about to run. That's right. How are the roads looking right now, Samuel? I looked at Transguide. It looks like traffic is building just a bit. Traffic building just a bit, as you mentioned, uh, Stephanie and David, but things uh, still look well. This is the Transguide view at 410 at Cherry Ridge. We have still have a stalled vehicle. The emergency vehicles are gone, but we still have the stalled vehicles. Let's take a better look at this here at the wall. This is actually in the uh, westbound lanes here, but you see the vehicle still there is off to the side. Just something to uh, look out for. Again, this is a I-10. This is a 410. And so not really impacting traffic too much as you saw. Let's go out to the Hill Country. Again, we mentioned this yesterday. There's some guardrail work if you're on I-10 between Kerrville and Comfort today. Uh, again, they're doing that work in that area. So just something to uh, keep in mind. There's going to be some alternating main lane closures there on I-10. So if you travel between Comfort and Kerrville, there's something to watch out for today. Uh, once you get into Bernie this morning, uh, things looking fine between Bernie and downtown San Antonio, 24 to 25 minutes. And then between Bernie and 1604, 14 minutes this morning. And just a look at the other travel time, 17 minutes, for instance, if you're coming in on 35 from Lytle and there's Cherry Ridge as they uh, move the camera around and there's another issue. So we'll check on that uh, coming up, guys. All right, we'll check back with you, Samuel. Thank you. Windy and cold. Sounds like uh, February. Does I, I can hear the conversation now because I was a stubborn kid. I, I can imagine there's some kid right, kids right now telling their parents, I'm going to wear shorts today. It'll be uh -huh. fine. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it. If you're going to the bus stop. It's going to be chilly. Temperatures are in the 40s right now. We got wind chills in the low 40s. Uh, and it's only going to warm up to about 70 today. So I don't know if that's quite short weather. Uh, average is 59. Record is 41. Uh, record low is 41. We're not going to quite get down to that record level. But uh, you know, we're in the ballpark. It's, it's chilly out there. 46 degrees, Boulevardy, 43 Bernie Stage, 44 Bandera, 42 Kerrville. You got low 50s. 
They're across parts of southern Bear County. 54 Creso Springs, 59 right now in Catula. Winds are still gusty and not as strong as they were last night, but we're seeing gusts around 25 miles per hour here in town. Gusting to 28 in New Braunfels. And the wind chill values uh, feels like 42 here in town. 44 in Hondo. 35 is what it feels like right now in Kerrville. So some pretty significant wind chills, especially as you get up into the hill country. We are seeing a little bit of cloud cover, too. We're going to watch that. Uh, mostly cloudy skies as you get out towards Del Rio and Eagle Pass. A few clouds trying to work through San Antonio. Where we do see more cloud cover, that will keep temperatures up just a little bit this morning. Outside here in town, 48 degrees at the airport, 51 stints and 50 at Kelly. And we're down to 46 at Randolph with a good northeasterly breeze there. Rest of today, temperatures will climb. We'll see partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies. We should get up near 70 by about 5 o'clock or so. And the winds, again, will ease up just a little bit. Here's our forecast going forward. Uh, sun today, but tomorrow will be different because we're going to get a lot of cloud cover. Moisture surges back in. This is 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. We start to get some, sh some showers out west, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Rock Springs. You can see some light showers as early as tomorrow morning. And that will shift east during the day. So a couple light showers around San Antonio tomorrow. You'll feel the moisture a little bit more, and you will definitely feel it by Friday morning. Drizzle, showers, maybe even some fog to start your Friday. And then we're going to have to watch what happens in the afternoon. Storm system comes in. we got a bit of a dry line developing out to the west. This could spark off some showers and storms. This particular model does not show a whole lot here. Uh, shows a lot of the activity east of I-35. But the conditions are there that if we do get some storms, they could become strong to severe. Not everyone is going to get storm activity on Friday. I think it'll be hit or miss, about a 40% chance. Uh, but the threat is there, and the Storm Prediction Center has us in a slight risk for Friday. This whole area shaded in yellow, which extends Mississippi all the way back to central Texas, in that slight risk on a scale of one to five, about a two. Hail gusty winds would be your main threat. We'll be here. We'll keep an eye on the radar. We'll let you know. Good news is that this all clears out Friday night and the weekend looks great. Uh, we'll be in the upper 80s, but a 30% chance of showers from drizzle tomorrow. 81 Friday, 30% chance or 40% chance, I should say, of some storms, especially during the afternoon. And then a pretty hot weekend, guys. A hot weekend. <laughs> That's not too weekend. bad. Hot weekend. On SA Live, they're getting you prepared for the weekend. So later today on SA Live, uh, author and mother of four, that's Christy Cuthbert. She's going to help us create an Oscar party at home. So we're going to be talking about doing things like Oscar bingo, Oscar prediction sheets, and making correspondent microphones for your kids. We're also going to show you how to lay out a food spread that involves star-shaped foods. All that and more coming up on SA Live starting at 1 p.m. 553, 48 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, one, four, six, fireball two, your daily four, two, zero, five, two, fireball eight. Cash five, two, seven, eight, 24, 29, and mega millions. Six, 23, 43, 49, 52, mega ball is five, mega plier is three. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in Minneapolis. The very latest in that monumental and swift decision in the Derek Chauvin trial. The jury found the ex-officer guilty on all charges, and that sent shockwaves of relief. This morning, George Floyd's brother is going to join us live, including the nine-year-old girl who took the stand. You'll see it only on GMA. A new episode of KSAT Explains is out, and this week the show is about one of the most widely debated items on the May ballot. Prop B. If approved, Prop B would repeal San Antonio Police Union's right to collectively bargain. So we lay out what Prop B would and wouldn't accomplish if it's passed. KSET explains Prop B, available on demand right now at KSET.com slash explains. And as we wrap up this half hour, I want to tell you about a pet who needs a home over the San Antonio Humane Society. This is Addie. She is a sweet two-year-old pit bull terrier originally from Beaumont. She was rescued from Hurricane Laura last August and is now looking for a home. She underwent surgery to correct a leg injury and received physical therapy. She's now fully recovered and ready to be adopted. She will do best in a home with no cats. Addie's adoption fee has been waived thanks to the Guardian Angel Fund. If you'd like some more information on this pet and more, 
about other pets, call 210-226-7461, or you can visit sahumane.org. And we'll be back with more weather and traffic and news. Vegetarian and vegan diet has been linked to weight loss and preventing certain diseases. But coming up in our next half hour, we're going to share the facts and fiction of those types of diets. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. We're going to hear more about the cold front that blew through last night in just a few minutes. But first, it's a day many have waited for. The verdict in the Derek Chauvin trial, the former Minneapolis police officer, was convicted of all three charges. Many across the country take to the streets to celebrate a conviction. CNN's Daryl Forges has the latest from Minneapolis and joins us now live. Good morning. Derek Chauvin waking up behind bars today after being convicted of all three charges against him. Now, I can tell you the atmosphere here in the Twin Cities has changed drastically for many, including George Floyd's family. They've been breathing a big sigh of relief. Unintentional second degree murder, third degree murder, second degree manslaughter. The verdict heard around the world. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Derek Chauvin looking on hearing the word guilty on all three charges, then taken away in handcuffs. Outside the courtroom, hugs, tears, and emotions pouring out. Many taking to the streets to celebrate the verdict. After a summer of protests, some believe their calls for justice are finally being heard. This is gonna be the first in, in a, in a future of change. I promise you that. President Joe Biden also hailing the jury's decision. No one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. Calling George Floyd's family to share the moment. I think a John is coming. My dad is going to change the world. He's going to start to change it now. Say his name. George Floyd. The Floyd family overjoyed and emotional after the verdict. Oh, man. So many emotions right now. Filoni's Floyd says justice prevailed but there is still more work to be done. Today has been an occasion where people can celebrate, but tomorrow is back to business. And for Felonius, while the verdict was being read, you can just see and feel his emotion as he was shaking as the verdict was being read. Now for Derek Chauvin, he will be sentenced in about eight weeks from now, and he's looking at between 12 and a half to 40 years in prison. Live in Minneapolis. I'm Daryl Forges. And thanks to Daryl Forges for that report from Minneapolis Live this morning. And we had a nice cold front that Ooh. blew in overnight. Things got windy yesterday. Yeah, it was right after, well, right about dinner time. Yeah, the winds picked up out of the north. Uh, gusty, got cooler, and we're seeing some chilly temperatures this morning. We're in the 40s. We got wind chills. Didn't think we'd be talking about wind chills in late April, but yet here we are. It's been one of those years. Uh, 44 Comfort, 43 Bernie Stage, 51 Cash of 48 Hondo, 47 right now in New Braunfels. And as we zoom out some, you got low 40s in the Hill Country. It does moderate a little bit down to the south, 57 right now in Katua. Let's look at those wind chill values though. This is what it feels like 43 here in San Antonio. Feels like 36 right now in Kerrville and 40 in New Braunfels. We'll see the winds let up just a little bit today, but they'll still be around and be somewhat of a breezy day. Yesterday's pollen count, we had moderate counts of mold and oak still. We'll see where these end up today with those gusty ones. We'll be getting that pollen count in here in just a couple of hours. Forecast takes us up to 53, 10 o'clock, 60 noon time. We'll top out right around 70 a little bit later this afternoon. We've had a few issues on the roads this morning. Let's check in with Samuel King for the latest. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everyone out there. We'll start with some travel times. 24 minutes coming in on I-10 from Bernie. 28 minutes on 281 southbound from Boulevard and 25 minutes coming in from New Braunfels into downtown San Antonio. We do have a crash now on the board. This is I-35 southbound at Malone. Uh, the left hand shoulder is blocked, we understand, but uh, traffic is still uh, flowing fairly well uh, in that area. So that's just something to look out for if you are heading southbound on I-35 this morning. On the west side, 151. Good morning, folks out there. If you're traveling, looks good this right now, eight to nine minutes, but we know this can sort of back up and build up in the next uh, hour, hour and a half or so. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, this is Transguide 1604 at Bandera, 410 at Callahan. Looking fine this morning. We'll have another update coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Samuel.
New this morning, investigators working to figure out what led a woman to crash into a Via bus stop. It happened around 11 last night in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard near the Bandera and Culebra intersection. Police say the woman driving the SUV crashed into a Via bus stop and fence. A child in the car was able to crawl out of that wreck, but firefighters needed to cut the roof off to get the woman out. Officers say the child was not injured and the woman was taken to the hospital with only minor injuries. A man remains on the run after San Antonio police say he robbed a Walmart on the city's northwest side earlier this month. This happened earlier in the 6700 block of West Loop 1604. Stephen Cavazos is now live downtown this morning. So have there been any leads in this case, Stephen? Well, David, unfortunately, there have not been any leads. The search for that suspect is still underway, but that is why San Antonio Crime Stoppers is now asking for the community's help after they say that man not only shoplifted at that Walmart, but threatened to stab an employee. Now, again, this happened back on April 7th. San Antonio police say the man walked into that Walmart and, threat and that's when an employee spotted him shoplifting. They say that employee was with loss prevention, also approached him and asked him about his actions, and that's when the man threatened to stab that employee. Now, he was able to leave the store on foot, but thankfully, no one was hurt. Now, San Antonio Crime Stoppers is offering up to $5,000 in rewards for any information that could possibly lead to an arrest on this suspect. Of course, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number also on your screen at 210-224-7867. David, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. It could be several weeks before a ruling is made on the civil lawsuit over the Sutherland Springs shooting. Both sides presented their closing arguments in the case yesterday. The 2017 mass shooting claimed the lives of 26 people. According to the lawsuit, several of the victims' family members argue the U.S. Air Force failed to place shooter Devin Kelly into the National Background Check database after a domestic violence conviction. The government argues even if he was in the database, Kelly still could have committed that shooting. To the pandemic now, local health officials reporting 394 new cases of COVID-19 here in Bexar County and one new death. The Texas Department of State Health Services reports nearly half a million people are fully vaccinated in Bexar County. And we want to remind you, the University Health made several vaccine appointments available on their website, WeCanDoItSA.com. They are also offering a limited number of walk-in appointments at the three locations listed on your screen. The Alba Dome is offering walk-in appointments between 2 and 5 in the afternoon every day this week through Saturday. And an emotional reunion for one Texas musician and his lost dog. Shane Smith and his wife were visiting the Alamo City with their dog Gretchen. And while checking out of their room at Hotel Emma, the couple's truck was stolen with Gretchen still inside. The truck was later found outside St. Luke's Baptist Hospital in the medical center, but Gretchen was not inside. Smith said they spent hours handing out flyers with a $10,000 reward for the dog's safe return. Shortly after, we spoke with the Musician, the family got a call saying Gretchen had been found. My father-in-law just called me and said that they found her tied to a tree. I don't know the details of it, but we found her. So I <laughs> like I'm like beside myself right now. Gretchen was found by a family walking along a trail in Leon Valley. They credit the story being shared by the community. Black it is safe. Yeah, it is now 608 and 48 degrees. And the Spurs can make it three wins in a row tonight. Yes, we believe in them. Go Spurs, go. We're going to have a preview of tonight's home game. And the everyday goods you usually buy at the store could be getting a price hike. After the break, we'll see how it will impact your family's bottom line. And taking a look outside with a live cam, we are at a cold 48 degrees. I'll, I'll call it cold. It's pretty chilly out there. Grab a jacket. We're going to check him in Justin later on. Ooh, hate to do this at 612, but we got some unwelcome news for your wallet. More big companies are raising prices in the aftermath of the coronavirus pandemic. It's affecting everyone from shoppers at the grocery store to customers at the car rental counter. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has the details. 
This morning, some popular household items will soon cost you more due to pandemic-related supply issues. Procter & Gamble is expected to hike prices between 4 and 9 percent on baby products, adult diapers, and feminine care brands beginning in September. The company, which also owns Tide Detergent and Charmin Toilet Paper, says some of those products will also be getting more expensive. It follows a similar price hike last month by rival Kimberly Clark, which makes Huggies diapers and Scott paper products. What's happening is you have pent up demand due to COVID and that's being combined with you don't have all workers back to work. So that's creating a classic supply demand imbalance. Americans hitting the road this summer will also be paying more when it comes to rental cars. That's because of a shortage of vehicles. Rental cars had a, had a terrible business situation during the pandemic. Um, so they sold off, um, as, as in some cases, as much as half of their fleet. And auto companies have been forced to scale back production due to a shortage of semiconductor chips. The problem now trickling down to the car rental counter. And in some markets like Hawaii and Florida, we're seeing up to 300% increases. So the cost of your car can be way more than your flight these days. Another industry under new pressure, video streaming services. After months of being stuck inside, Americans are watching less TV. Netflix stock fell sharply Tuesday after the company reported a slowdown in subscriber growth. Consumers are now dropping streaming services at a record rate. Back to those prices at the grocery store, Coca-Cola has announced it will also be raising prices. Another factor in this is rising transportation costs. Gas prices are approaching $3 a gallon nationwide. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, San Diego. All right, let's get over to traffic. Samuel King with an update on what's happening on the roads. Hey, thank you, David and uh, Stephanie. Taking a look at some travel times coming in from Pleasanton on 37. 28 minutes, 19 minutes from Castroville on US 90 and 17 minutes northbound on I-35 from Lytle. Uh, taking a look at uh, the map here, we had a crash uh, on the south side, 35 in Malone, but that has been cleared. This was on the left shoulder. We can see uh, things look fine. So taking a look at 35 inside Loop 410, once you uh, reach it, the, for instance, if you're coming in from New Braunfels, once you get to 410, 10 minutes uh, heading into downtown, uh, 10 minutes heading the outbound side too. And it's the same thing on the uh, southwest side coming up from 410 into downtown, 10 minutes each direction inbound and outbound. So that's a good thing. Uh, this is a trans guide 410 at Jackson Keller traffic building there, but looking fine at the moment, as well as at I-10 at Callahan guys. All right, thank you, Samuel. And we will not argue with our children. They will wear their coats, <laughs> right, Justin? It is a must. It is <laughs> a must. It is, it is that cold outside. It's jacket left. No shorts today. No. Uh, we're getting temperatures in the 40s right now. We're going to be up close to 70 this afternoon. So coolish type day. That cold front meant business last night when it came through. Let's take a look at some of the weather headlines. And so we've got a few clouds out there right now. It'll be a cool, breezy, partly cloudy day. Uh, tomorrow, clouds return, some showers, some drizzles. So tomorrow's will be kind of damp, especially in the afternoon. And then Friday, some morning drizzle. We could get a few storms late in the afternoon, some of which could be strong. Let's start with the temperatures, though. 43 Comfort, 42 Kerrville, 47 in New Braunfels, 46 over at Randolph, and 51 Castroville. We'll zoom out some, and you'll see the warmer temperatures are, are down to the south and west. That's where we have a little cloud cover that's keeping temperatures up. But 46 Gonzales, 49 Kennedy, 49 in Victoria. And then you got the gusty north wind still gusting to 30 miles per hour in New Braunfels. These winds are going to ease some today as we get into the afternoon. Uh, but there's enough wind this morning to create pretty significant wind chill. Feels like 43 in town, 40 in Gonzales. Feels like 36 right now in Kerrville. And uh, it, it's going to stay this way for another couple of hours. Looking at the uh, satellite picture, those are some of those clouds working in. It'll be off and on today. It's going to be cloudy, but we may see some partly cloudy skies during the afternoon. And temperatures, as we mentioned, right up around 70 later this afternoon. Northerly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. Let's talk dew points now. It's really dry, but those dew points start to jump up. Starting tonight and then into tomorrow, you'll see them rise dramatically. In fact, we'll be up around 70 on Friday as far as the dew point is concerned, and that means there's a ton of moisture to work with. We've got a storm system moving in, and that's why we think there will be some drizzle, but maybe a couple thunderstorms as well. Here's what the forecast shows. Uh, partly cloudy today. This is 4 o'clock, and then 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, clouds are back. 
We start to get some showers, some light drizzle out west. That spreads east through the day, so by tomorrow afternoon, there could even be a few light showers here around San Antonio and uh, still staying cloudy. As we get into Friday, we start off with drizzle, light showers, maybe even a little bit of fog. And then by the afternoon, here comes our storm system. If we see some clearing, that, that gives us some instability. Thunderstorms may start to develop. This shows a couple of thunderstorms east of San Antonio by 6 o'clock on Friday. Any storm that develops will have the potential to be strong to severe. Not everybody's going to get thunderstorm activity. It'll be hit or miss. But if you do, we'll have to watch for the threat of some hail and gusty winds. This area is shaded in yellow here. That is your slight risk, and that stretches from Mississippi all the way back into parts of central Texas. Does include San Antonio and much of our eastern uh, eastern half of our viewing area. So that's what uh, Friday looks like. In the meantime, 70 today, 67 tomorrow, 30% chance of showers and drizzle, cloudy skies. 81 Friday, some morning fog and drizzle, and then a 40% chance of some afternoon storms. It does clear out for the weekend, 87 Saturday, 88 Sunday, and we'll get some more rain chances, storm chances next week. Guys, a hot weekend. Yes, and hopefully the rain. Let's hope. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Justin. You're a good way to start it. 618, 47, ooh, 47 now. Ooh. Moving down a little bit. Yeah. All adults in the U.S. are now eligible to get the COVID-19 vaccine, but a large portion of the population still hesitant. We're going to see what that could mean in today's GMA First Look after the break. Does your vitamin C last 24 hours? Only Nature's Bounty does. New Immune 24 Hour Plus has longer lasting vitamin C plus herbal and other immune superstars. Only from Nature's Bounty. At Airwick, we craft authentic fragrances to bring the essence of nature into your home. But nature can't thrive without wildflowers. Since 2009, we've lost 33 million acres of grassland and wildflower habitat in the U.S. Great Plains. Airwick Scented Oils is partnering with World Wildlife Fund to reseed 1 billion square feet of native wildflowers and grasslands, making our connection to nature stronger. Learn more at airwick.us. Millions are saying yes to Allegra, the number one allergist-recommended non-drowsy brand. Allegra works two times faster than Claritin, and unlike Zyrtec, it's non-drowsy. Say yes to the fastest non-drowsy 24-hour relief, Allegra. In this morning's GMA First Look, with thousands of appointments going unfilled in some areas of the country, growing concern over vaccine hesitancy. Some clinics in the Dallas area have no lines and no waits. We can do about 12,000 shots a day at Fair Park. Uh, in the last few days, we've done less than 4,000 a day. Meantime, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is still on hold in the U.S. as health experts investigate those rare blood clots in six women. European regulators say they found a possible link between the vaccine and blood clots, but say the benefits outweigh the risks, and yesterday made the recommendation that shots move forward. A CDC advisory panel will meet on Friday to discuss the future of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in the U.S. We'll be live from a mass vaccination center coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA first look. I'm Whit Johnson, ABC News, New York. It is game day in San Antonio. The Spurs preparing to take on the Miami Heat tonight. The Spurs are looking to make it three in a row. Remember, they won two in a row on the road. Now they bring that road record home, hopefully, because it's better than the home record. Tip-off for tonight is at 7.30 at and Center. You can watch it live at Valley Sports Southwest or catch the highlights tomorrow morning on Good Morning San Antonio. So if you can't stay up late, we'll have it all for you in the morning. That's good. Go Spurs go. Microsoft rolling out an Outlook update that will give companies the option of scheduling breaks between work meetings. The tech giant made the change after doing its own research on digital overload. The company saying in a blog post that even a sliver of time between meetings can help. And how about this? It's Polaroid's smallest camera ever. The Polaroid Go is only four inches long and just over two inches tall. It snaps tiny pictures to match. It takes about 15 minutes to develop. The Go costs 100 bucks and will be available next Tuesday. And a magnifying glass comes with it. That's cute. I like that. It's pretty handy. It's a throwback. 
Yeah, it is. I'm glad you knew what I was talking about when I was waving papers for the, the Polaroid. I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> Some people are like, what? Some you had to you had to wave your it. pictures? What? And yeah, then you used to get your, your your magic marker and write on the bottom because yeah. there's that little With a date? space at the yeah, bottom. Yeah, for the yeah. date or, you know, you know, this person or this person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we'll bring it back. Put a thumbtack in it on the wall. Yeah. Now you can do that with a new camera. <laughs> 625 and 48 degrees memories there. Man. And there's a lot of information about plant-based diets, but not everything you hear is true. In our next half hour, the advice experts say you should leaf behind. Oh, and taking a live look at the roads and trains, guys. Oh, didn't know what that was. Uh, traffic's moving pretty good right now. Samuel King's got your uh, traffic update coming up in the next half hour. We'll be right back. Three teenage girls have made claims against their boss that go way outside their job duties. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police here in Castle Hills have arrested the boss. I'll tell you more about it. A late night drives ends in a rescue for a woman following a rollover crash on the city's west side. I'm Stephen Cavazos and coming up this morning on GMSA, how that scene unfolded. Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer, guilty on all three charges. I'm Micah Jassy reporting in Minneapolis. Coming up, the renewed calls for police reform on Capitol Hill. And live luck outside with live cam. It is, well, cold, to be blunt about it. Wind is blowing. It's like almost winter time. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 21st. Happy Wednesday. And yes, it is chilly out yeah, there. People Definitely. rolling over in bed going, I can't get up. It's too cold. It's too it's cold. It's too cold. Where are the covers? <laughs> Never get back up. I can't go to work. It's too cold. Yeah, too cold, too windy. It's crisp. It's cool. It is breezy. But that being said, we're all kind of huh? like, this is nice because we know like next month it's going to be in the 90s. Super hot. Right. We'll take it for now. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to give it a great, I'm giving it a B minus. I don't know what you guys think about that. I, I think A minus. A minus. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Going up. We're doing better. Our GPA is going up. Uh, 47. Uh, chilly start. If you're heading off to school this morning, you will want the coat at the bus stop. Trust me on that. 170 this afternoon, partly cloudy and mild. You look at the temperatures across the state. Most of Texas is dealing with this cooler weather. 37 in Waco. It's 40 in Dallas. 32 Abilene. You got below freezing numbers up there in the hill country. We're sitting at 48 degrees. A lot of places. Uh, dealing with 40s this morning, but this is the wind chill. This is what it feels like when you factor in that gusty north wind. Feels like 43 here in town. Feels like it's in the 30s in the hill country, so it is a cool start. That sun will be up here in about 30 minutes, and we'll start the warming process up to 53, 10 o'clock, 60 noontime. We'll top out close to 70 this afternoon. Changes tomorrow, more clouds, some chances of rain, maybe a few storms Friday. We'll detail that forecast here in just a few minutes. But let's get over to Samuel now and check in as it looks like traffic starting to pick up. That traffic picking up a little bit, but things look uh, fairly well. The only issue we have on the map at the moment is a stalled vehicle there at US 90 and Nogalitos. But other than that, things uh, looking fine this morning as we head over to the wall. This is uh, Fredericksburg Road and Medical Center uh, area. Looking good right now, not too many delays, uh, 12 to 13 minutes if you take the entire stretch from Heatner down to Woodlawn. No delays over in the medical center either. Uh, taking a look at some other travel times, uh, 24 minutes coming in from Bernie on I-10. We mentioned uh, US-90 is 20 minutes right now from Casherville, so that's a fairly good time. 17 minutes from on US on I-35 from Lytle, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin this morning. And here is a look at Transguide. This is 35 at uh, Martin near downtown, looking fine. See traffic building up at uh, Loop 410 at San Pedro near the airport. Uh, nothing blocking it, but you can see the volume building as people head back and forth out and about to work and school. We'll have another update here coming up, guys. Thank you, Samuel. A disturbing story this morning. A manager at a business in Castle Hills accused of fondling teenage girls who worked with him. Katrina Weber is live in Castle Hills Police Department with more on this arrest. So Katrina, how many girls were involved in this? Well, Castle Hills Police say they've heard from three girls so far, all making claims that the suspect groped them or made other sexual advances against them while they were at work. Police have arrested that suspect, 27-year-old James Maxwell Crow. They arrested him yesterday on three counts of indecency with a child. The arrest affidavit says all of the girls involved are under the age of 17. 
they say this started as far back as September of last year. And all three say that Crow began touching them soon after they started working with him. Now, there is no mention in the affidavit of the name of the business or what type of business this was where they worked. But we do hope to hear more from Castle Hills police later on today, including whether they suspect there could possibly be other alleged victims. Reporting live in Castle Hills, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A woman a lucky to be alive after her SUV rolled over into a via bus stop and a fence last night. This happened in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard near Culebra Road on the city's west side. Our Stephen Cavazos is live downtown this morning. Now, Stephen, was anyone else hurt in the crash? Well, Stephanie, we're told that the woman was driving down along Wilson Boulevard with her young daughter, who we're told is as young as 10. Now, thankfully, that young girl was able to escape the vehicle with no injuries on her own. But the woman was trapped inside and first responders actually had to cut the roof of the vehicle open just to get her out safely. Now, again, that the, the mother and daughter were heading down Wilson Boulevard sometime after 11 last night. And it was during that time the SUV rolled over and crashed into that via bus stop and fence. Now, San Antonio Police, the San Antonio Fire Department and EMS were all on the scene. That woman was taken to University Hospital with what we're told were minor injuries. Now, the cause of that crash is still under investigation this morning. However, we are told no other vehicles were involved. Reporting live downtown, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. David Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. And this morning, we are still waiting on investigators to release video footage of a transit police officer shooting and killing a man on a via bus yesterday. Via transit police chief Mark Witherell says two officers responded to a call about a man with a gun on the bus line going up San Pedro near West Olmos. He says, quote, something transpired, end quote, that led officers to open fire, but has not released any further details at this time. The Bear County Medical Examiner has not identified the man who died at this time either. After 10 and a half hours of deliberation over two days, the diverse jury found former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin guilty on all three charges. The verdict drew shouts of surprise and relief outside the courtroom and across the country. ABC's Ike Jochi has the latest. Guilty on all three charges. Derek Chauvin motionless as the judge read the verdict out loud. And now there are renewed calls for police reform on Capitol Hill. Overnight, celebrations and even some fireworks in Minneapolis. After 10 and a half hours of deliberation, Members of the jury, I will now read the verdicts. As they judge Peter Cahill the announcing the fate of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. Chauvin, convicted of all three counts, second-degree murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter. The jury of seven women and five men, which included six people of color, working swiftly. The former officer led away in handcuffs. <laughs> At George Floyd Square, near where he was murdered, the crowd erupting in cheers. And in Houston, Floyd's family members, including his older brother, watching as the verdict was read. Today, we are able to breathe again. Just because you are a law, you're not above the law. Convicted, guilty on all counts, George Floyd mattered. Headlines from some of the nation's top newspapers this morning. We must do more to reduce the likelihood that tragedies like this will ever happen and occur again. Overnight, Democrats renewing their push for Congress to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act that would ban chokeholds and no-knock warrants, among other measures. Now, despite the renewed energy for legislation, the bill faces an uphill battle on Capitol Hill. It'll need the support of all Democrats plus 10 Republicans. Mike Ajaji, ABC News, Minneapolis. In your morning headlines, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation is looking into an incident of a police officer shooting and killing a teenage girl in Columbus. Family members have identified the girl as 15-year-old Makia Bryant. The Columbus Police Department released body cam footage that appears to show Bryant swinging a knife at others in a group. The video shows it took 10 seconds between the officer arriving and firing several shots at Bryant. She was declared dead at a nearby hospital. A new study finds middle-aged people who don't get enough sleep may be at higher risk for developing dementia. The study looked at data on nearly 8,000 people in Britain over 25 years. It found people who slept six or fewer hours a night on a regular basis between the ages of 50, 60, and 70 were 30% more likely to develop dementia compared to people who typically got seven hours of sleep a night. Now, the study does not definitely answer the question whether poor sleep causes dementia or dementia causes poor sleep. 
More than 135 million Americans are breathing unhealthy air. That's according to the annual State of the Air report by the American Lung Association. The group analyzed data from 2017 to 2019, which means any decreases in pollution from the pandemic lockdowns were not included. The group says climate change is continued to worsen air pollution along with spikes in particle pollution. Once again, California had the most polluted cities in the U.S. for both smog and soot. Here at Bear County received an F in the ozone category and a B in particle pollution. And President Joe Biden says the U.S. will cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least half by 2030. The president is preparing to meet with 40 world leaders tomorrow to discuss a global approach to limit the effects of climate change. The new target would nearly double America's previous commitment to reduce greenhouse gases. Fort Worth-based American Airlines says it's bringing all of its pilots back on the job by the end of the summer. The company will also be hiring 300 new pilots by the end of the year and 600 pilots in 2022. Meantime, air travel levels remain at pandemic era highs. The Transportation Security Administration screened more than 1.4 million people at airports across the country on Monday. By comparison, only 99,000 people were screened on the same day in 2020. It is now 638 and 48 degrees. Vegetarian and vegan diets have been linked to weight loss and preventing certain diseases. But after the break, we'll share the facts and the lies about these types of diets. Welcome back into 642. A vegetarian and vegan diet has been linked to weight loss and preventing certain diseases. But is everything you hear about plant-based diets really true? Erica Hernandez reports on what advice experts say you should leave behind. Meat, eggs, fish, dairy. Would you really be able to cut these foods out if you went on a plant-based diet? No, because I love steak. I eat meat almost every single day. <laughs> I was vegetarian for a year, um, but I stopped. Many people believe going on a plant-based diet can cause deficiencies in essential nutrients such as protein and calcium. However, so if you plan correctly, you can get enough of all the other vitamins and minerals and proteins that you need. Eggs and milk are high in protein. Vegans can get protein in beans, chickpeas, and tofu. And foods such as peas, spinach, figs, and almonds contain calcium. But just because you are vegan or vegetarian does not mean that you have a healthier diet. Some vegans uh, don't eat very many vegetables, so they may be eating, you know, processed grains or rice or, you know, um, crackers and bread. And beware of added salt. A four ounce patty of 90% lean beef has 77 milligrams of salt, while a traditional veggie burger has 398. So whether you're vegan or not, be sure to read the labels. Another myth is that consuming soy increases someone's risk for breast cancer. There is no evidence to support that. Earlier studies in rats showed when they consumed large amounts of soy, it increased their breast cancer risk. However, human and rats process soy differently. No studies have shown a soy and cancer risk connection in humans. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Good right. advice. Yeah. Tough, tough to follow. Let's check in with uh, Samuel and see what see the, how the following distances are. Uh, things, <laughs> things are looking so far so good on the roads here as we approach 7 o'clock. 29 minutes you're coming in from Seguin on I-10. 30 minutes if you're coming in from the Floresville area to downtown San Antonio. Uh, taking a look at the maps here, nothing uh, on the map right now. That's good. Might be an issue here or there we don't know about, but generally uh, nothing really disrupting uh, the highways. Let's take a look at uh, northwest side of uh, Loop 410. Uh, between 151 and I-10, seven minutes each direction, so things flowing well. But remember, after 7 o'clock, things can quickly uh, turn here on the highway, so just something to keep in mind. And you can see here, this is a 410 at Cherry Ridge. Had some issues here earlier, but traffic is flowing well. But again, it is building at this time, guys. All right, not too bad. Justin, I have a question. Uh oh You had, you were giving out grades for the weather uh -huh. yesterday, and you said today was probably a B minus, which, yeah, I pretty much agree. Yep. So what constitutes an F, like 100 degrees or, uh, yeah, or nine been, degrees? Wow. Uh, nine degrees, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too soon. Uh, we won't go back there. But yeah, like 105, I'd say. Maybe not 100, but 105. Okay. That would flunk. That would be that would yeah. flunk. Okay. 
Well, we, we might get that. I mean, it's, it's subjective. Yeah. I'm not a tough grader, okay? But uh, I'd say this morning, A, B minus. It's, it's chilly out there. Uh, 48 degrees at the airport, 32 Abilene, 29 Lubbock, 31 in Amarillo. You look at the bigger picture, though, this is a cold air mass for April. It's 32 in Omaha, 31 Minneapolis, 19 in Casper. This cool air is going to sweep east. Could be sort of the last gasp, if you will, of some of the colder air coming down from Canada. As you know, as we get into May, we'll start seeing some 90s for sure. And uh, outside right now, we've got a few clouds. 48 degrees, 50 Stinson, 49 Kelly, 46 right now in Randolph. Still carrying a northeasterly breeze anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. So right now, we're in the 40s, or at least we did drop down to 47 briefly this morning. The average is 59, so we're about 12 degrees below the average. The record, if you were curious, record low for this date is 41. That was set back in 2013, so we're not quite there. But we're in the ballpark, 46 currently at Canyon Lake, 43 Comfort, 41 Las Maples, 55 out in Del Rio. Cloud cover helping temperatures out west, 47 Gonzales, 48 Kennedy. And there's like some of the wind gusts. All the way up to 30 miles per hour right now in the brothel. So the winds are still fairly strong. I think they ease up a little bit as we get later into today. But we'll still probably stay in that 10 to 20 mile per hour range. Enough wind there this morning to give us a wind chill. Feels like 43 here in town. Feels like 40 in New Braunfels. Feels like 35 right now in Kerrville. We mentioned some of that cloud cover. Now this makes it look a little worse than it is. There are some clouds though trying to track through. So we'll call it partly cloudy today. Temperatures up around 70 or so. And we mentioned those northerly winds. Forecast uh, for today, quiet. But as we get into tomorrow morning, clouds increase, moisture increases. We start to see some showers out west, and that will work east through the day. It's just, just some light showers, drizzle, uh, the kind of stuff that's not going to add up to much. But it could be a little bit damp from time to time tomorrow. Then as we get into Friday morning, some showers, some drizzle for sure, maybe a little bit of fog. And then Friday afternoon, if we can get a little bit of clearing, We'll start to get some instability around the area, and that could help to create some thunderstorms. We've got a storm system approaching from the west, and this model does show some thunderstorms trying to show up. Uh, this would be 6 o'clock Friday. The situation is that uh, if we do get some storms to develop, they could be strong to severe. So that's why we have to watch this time frame. Not everybody's going to get thunderstorms. It'll be a hit or miss type situation. But should we get those thunderstorms, some hail and gusty winds would be a threat. Uh, here's the severe weather potential as we get into Friday. It's a large area, so Oklahoma down to East Texas, Central Texas, all the way out to Louisiana and Mississippi. And on a scale of one to five, we're talking about a two here. This could get upgraded in spots as we get a little bit closer, but that's the general idea. And so uh, that's what we'll be watching Friday afternoon. Good news, clears out quickly Friday night. And by Saturday, Sunday, we're looking at great weather for the weekend, albeit a little warm. So 70 today, 67 tomorrow. 30% uh, chance of showers drizzle on Thursday, 40% chance of some afternoon storms Friday. And then uh, upper 80s this weekend, another chance for some storms, it looks like Tuesday of next week. And we need the rain. We do need the rain. We don't want the severe weather, but we need a good downpour in the worst way. The aquifer continues to drop, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. It is now 649, 48 degrees. And tomorrow is Earth Day, and we will learn more about our magnificent planet. A local environmental science professor will explain what Earth does to keep us alive and why we should protect our home. And outside once again with live cam. Sun's coming up, got cakes on the griddle. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in Minneapolis. The very latest in that monumental and swift decision in the Derek Chauvin trial. The jury found the ex-officer guilty on all charges, and that sent shockwaves of relief. This morning, George Floyd's brother is going to join us live, including the nine-year-old girl who took the stand. You'll see it only on GMA. A local man is accused of being more than just a bad boss to some teenage girls. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Castle Hills police say he touched them in all the wrong places. They arrested 27-year-old James Maxwell Crow yesterday on charges of indecency with a child. Three girls, all under the age of 17, made the claims against him, telling police that their former manager groped them and made other sexual advances while on the clock. 
they all say it started soon after they began working with him at a restaurant, some of it going back as far as September of last year. Now, there's no mention in the arrest affidavit of the name of the business. We also hope to talk to police later to see if they suspect there could be more victims. Reporting from Castle Hills, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Investigators are still trying to determine the cause of a rollover crash that happened last night in the 300 block of Wilson Boulevard. This happened as a woman was driving down Wilson Boulevard along with her daughter and who were told was as young as 10. Now it was during that time the SUV she was driving rolled over into a via bus stop and fence. The young girl was able to get out of the SUV on her own and thankfully was able to escape with no injuries. However, first responders had to cut the roof of that SUV to get the woman out of the vehicle safely. Now, thankfully, she was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries. However, the cause of that crash is still under investigation. No other vehicles were involved. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. And coming up today on SA Live, it's all about the Oscars, and we're going to show you how to create your own party at home. That's right. Hosts and guests can be in pajamas since it's been a year of watching movies from the living room. There will be craft projects for adults and kids and Oscar bingo, as well as predictions. It's all on SA Live after the news at noon. One more check of traffic. Here's Samuel. Fairly good out there, uh, David and Stephanie. Uh, I-10 from Bernie coming into downtown 24 minutes, 26 minutes on 35 uh, from New Braunfels. We do have one issue out there. This is on the west side. This is 1604 at uh, Marbach. There is a stalled vehicle to look out for, but traffic still in the green. But we are seeing some slowdowns on the east side as well. Loop 410 northbound at I-10 east. That's going to continue to build in the next hour. Also, a few slowdowns downtown. Justin, I-10 at Frio. Thanks, sir. And temperatures still in the upper 40s right now. Wind chills in the low 40s out there. Bundle up if you're going to be outside. It does warm up some 70 by this afternoon. Still a little bit breezy. Tomorrow, clouds, 30% chance of showers, some drizzle. We'll see some chances of a few thunderstorms Friday afternoon. And then it clears out for the weekend. Upper 80s Saturday and Sunday. But we'll keep our fingers crossed for some measurable rain as we finish out the work week. And that'll help us with our drought situation. Very much so, but great advice. Grab a jacket, it's cold outside. We'll be back for GMSA at nine. In the meantime, Good Morning America is next. Have a great Wednesday.